This video shows you how to turn on a TRV valve or a thermostatic valve stocking the off position or essentially a radiator that's not heating up. So essentially you turn your radiator to the full blast position at number 5, you turn it on and it doesn't give any heating and why does this happen? Um, it happens because of static. Um, you know, sometimes during summer you've left your radiator on for a protracted period of time um, in the off position and when you turn it back on it doesn't it doesn't come on because the pin that sat on the plunger seat um, lacks um, thrusting movement um, in the upwards and downwards direction. Suffice to say the mechanism is somewhat rusty and lacks um, proper circulation or lubrication. So basically there are three methods of rectifying this issue. The first method would be to use your bare hands to um, undo the locking ring. It's not usually tucked tightly, so you don't need to exert a lot of force to undo the locking rings. The next step of the process would be to get the plunger and the pin in a thrusting rhythmic movement in such a way whereby we get the mechanism thrusting back um, to full throttle. You can improvise here, just use anything that's quite sturdy. You can use your pliers, you can use a bread knife and you can use a piece of metal. As long as it's got enough force to move the, um, the pin in a perpendicular position. And if you've got the locking rings quite tight, you could use like your plumber's pliers, grips, adjustable spanners or wrenches um, to, to get off the locking rings. But I think we're going to pretty much focus on, you know, getting the the pin in the plunger valve chamber in the in a piston kind of movement or in an ascending and descending um or the movement so you, you know we, we push it gently up and downwards um you know just to to get proper circulation you can also use like i said like a bread knife you know to to get the static out or you know to to move to get the parts moving um within within the trv valve so here we whack or tap the sides um, of the valves and not the screw threads um, so that we can dislodge the plunger from the um, valve seat. As a precaution, um, refrain from using nose pliers to, to pull out the pins because that could easily just get you know removed from the from the valve and you could um, ruin the mechanism. And have water oozing out from the bear hole that's been exposed. We took it up from the number five position because that's where we read the radiator from. So we're gonna put it back um, at the number five position. And if you take a look at the slot there, um, it's designed in such a way where we can just feed it in um, directly. But sometimes you've got the um, other head, you know, around the locking ring that looks as though it were like an umbrella. You know that you know if you've got that type of um, head, you'd need to rotate it, it slightly and um, clockwise till it feels like it's it's fitted into a slot like I'm doing here. But this one doesn't require you know you you know to rotate it slightly till it drops in. You can just fit this one um, directly um, due to the design, and then subsequently rotate the locking ring um, clockwise to secure the head. And with the poised or balanced circulation around the valve, you should start to get hot water coming through the flow pipe into the valve and into the radiator. If you're going out during winter and you know what well, you want to leave the property, it's always advisable not to um, turn your head um, to the zero position. I would rather you take it to the frost position, which indicate which is indicated by an asterisk, or um, during summer, you know, it's advisable to um, to leave it on full blast, you know, um, if you've reduced your boiler to the most minimum settings that way, um, the, plung the plunger um, doesn't get in the static sat position um, on the seat of the of the valve. So you, if we've got the mechanism working correctly, hot water actually start coming through the flow pipe into the valve and then the radiator. Um, but just take cognizance um, that, you know, most modern thermostatic radiator valves are bi-directional, which means that, you know, the thermostat could be fitted on either the flow or the return pipe um, of the radiator. So, if you haven't got hot water coming through, it could be that the thermostatic valve is fitted to the return side of the radiator.
However, it's always best practice to fit the TRV on the flow pipe that enters your radiator. So, if perchance a non-bidirectional thermostatic valve is fitted to the return side of the radiator, it could make a loud vibrating noise when water tries to pass through it. And so, as, as best practice, it's always best to check the product thoroughly uh, before installation and to look for and flow indicators where possible. So basically just refrain from, you know, always turning off the, the valve and to the zero position and turning off your boiler. Because if you turn off your boiler um, um, at night or during winter, um, the property um, temperature in the property could drop to very low levels. And in the morning, um, your boiler would do twice as much, you know, to, to get the property back up to heating. And uh, you may also have, um, you know, cosmetic damages and condensation on the wall that you'd need to um, to repair, you know, if you've got mould and, and stuff. So you might incur more charges when you're trying to um, um, be cost effective with regards to um, turning off the valve to zero position all the time and turning off your boiler. If these troubleshooting steps do not work, then you may need to replace the TRV unit altogether, um, depending on if you've got like a gravity fed system or a pressurized system. Um, you know, the idea basically is change the whole unit by essentially replacing the TRV valve. So essentially, if you're changing the TRV unit without bleeding first, um, you'd need to use like a vacuum or a bucket to capture um, all of the water that's coming up from the flow pipe. If you're using a pressurized system or a gravity fed system and you do not want to do a lot of draining, then you may need to bleed out the radiator um, before you change the TRV unit. And also, if you're using a gravity fed system, um, you need to use tank bongs. They allow for the radiator to be changed without having to drain the entire central heating circuit and you know, refill it with an inhibitor. And you don't need tank bongs for the pressurized system boilers or sealed system boilers, um, because you know, um, they supply water to multiple users um, simultaneously at the same time without losing any pressure. So basically, um, use the tank bong um, to block the system outlet and just block the expansion vent pipe and the cold water feed at the bottom um, of the tank. Just make sure they're twisted, you know, correctly, um, you know, round motion to um, to get the perfect seal. You can call them tank bongs or radiator bongs, you know, depending on, you know, and what you prefer. So basically, after blocking the cistern tank, um, you know, I'm bleeding out the, the radiator, you know, irrespective of whether you're using the pressurized system or the gravity fed system. Um, you know, as soon as the bleeding stops and the, the hissing sound stops, you can close out the bleed valve by turning it, you know, clockwise and then, you know, manually removing the TRV unit um, with grips and adjustable um, wrenches or spanners, um, you know, by removing the um, chrome pleated compression knots and the copper olives um, from the unit. If you do not want to remove it manually, you know, you've got a host of um, tools out there that could make, you know, that could give you like a seamless removal of the TRV unit. You can use the um, standard valve port remover and installer or the hydronic TRV inset removal tool or the inset removal servicing tool for replacing thermostatic insets. All of these tools um, would help with the seamless removal without draining off the um, heating system because that's what you want. Um, you don't want water all, all over the place, which I would demonstrate in my um, subsequent upcoming videos. Um, that'll be all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share if you found the information in this video useful and hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye. Bye now.